What's up Android community? This is Jake and I just wanted to do a little review of my Nexus 10 laptop conversion. Let's go ahead and start off with my $8 no-name Chinese brand Bluetooth 3.0 mouse. Uh, this thing is a not too thick, three quarters of an inch. Uh, it's slim enough to go ahead and slip away in a backpack or a case and not really care too much about it. Secondly, we have the Bluetooth keyboard dock case. Now, this guy's brand new, probably only about three weeks old for this specific device. Um, you'll find it on eBay as well. And this is what she looks like. I've actually already done a review on this case, so if you want a bunch of details on it, uh, you can go ahead and go check that out, and it'll give you more information. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and just take a look at the entire package with the keyboard and the mouse functioning together. So basically, um, the keyboard works as you would expect a keyboard to work on Android. It syncs up pretty well and uh, keeps up with typing as you would expect it to. You get about 15 hours of use time out of this guy. It's a 125 milliamp hour battery. Uh, the Bluetooth remote actually takes two AA or excuse me AAA batteries, and I've had for four months now and not had to change. So it does really well, even though it's Bluetooth 3 and not 4.0. Um, let's go ahead and get into Android as a whole and how it handles the mouse. Um, firstly, it does pretty good when you're in the GUI here and you try to implement something like scroll. It does what you would expect it to do and it scrolls very nicely. Um, it does a good job of it. When you go into applications, they tend to do the same thing. But the problem here is, is that not all of them react the same. For instance, while I'm in drive here, if I implement the right click, I actually get the proper action, which is the menu options. If I go ahead and right click or left click, excuse me, it will open up the app or the uh, the file. So this is an example of right and left click working properly as they're supposed to inside of Android. So this is clearly an application and a developer issue. So, now that we've established that we do have wheel scroll and right click, let's go ahead and see how well it works in Google+. Ah, it doesn't. This is the problem with some of these more niche hooks that certain people like someone who's trying to do something I'm doing here need. Um, I'm sure it's not that hard to implement, but it's just glossed over. We should have wheel scroll here. It makes no sense. Um, there are actually a couple of hidden hooks in Android that a lot of developers don't really tie into. And they're also kind of niche, but they're there because this is, in fact, a Linux core. So if I were to open up an application like Eflux Browser here, it is going to float right on top of the operating system instead of taking up the full screen. Uh, this is not necessarily just because this application, it's because Android has an API because of its Linux roots to be able to handle this type of functionality. This type of functionality along with right click and wheel scroll is something I would like to see implemented in every application, especially the Google applications. Uh, will they? Who knows. But it's really, really nice that it's there and it makes it one step closer to being an actual laptop replacement. The main issue you're going to run into if you're actually going to try to replace your Windows or Linux machine with this is the quality of the applications that you're going to find. Um, and all honestly, the only application that I haven't really been able to find is a good pro video editor. As far as everything else is concerned, I've been able to find a suitable and sometimes better replacement for it. I use Google Drive for my documents and spreadsheets, um, and it has real-time collaboration, which is awesome. It works great. I use Photoshop Touch, not Express, but Touch, for pro vid or uh, photography editing, and it is a very, very powerful tool and a fraction of the cost of the PC version. 
Um, there are real benefits to using Android over some of these other operating systems, which is obviously price of certain applications, like this Photoshop application that cost me ten dollars. Um, you know, we're talking to nearly a million applications consolidated into one marketplace right here that is the Google Play Store. That's something you're not going to get with Windows 7. It's actually something that Ubuntu is now starting to implement because they see the benefit of having that. It's a, it's a convenience benefit for the end user and it's a benefit for the distributor of the software because then he can consolidate and have more control over it. It's a, it's a, it's a better system altogether. Uh, there's other things in Android that other operating systems just don't replicate properly. Uh, for instance, Ubuntu has notification systems, but not like this, not like Android does. These are tied in so tight. Actionable notifications, you can't beat that. Um, the headless apps in Android that let everything talk to everything, no other OS handles it as smoothly and seamlessly as this does. Uh, and the real selling point is the fact that this is a multi-touch operating system. The future operating systems are not going to be mouse driven. They are not going to be touch driven. They're going to be a combination of the two. The only other operating system out there that does that now is Windows 8. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm no giant fan of Windows 8. Um, my conclusion is, is that this is very nice, very fluid. I enjoy the experience. I love Android to begin with, and I am an early adopter. I have no problem using this to replace my other two laptops. I have a machine that runs Ubuntu, and I have a machine that runs Windows 7, and I have no problem using this over that on a daily basis. They, they basically sit there and collect dust. So, uh... That's my review of this current setup I have. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it was informative to a couple of you. And um, I really hope it gets people to thinking a little bit about the future of this operating system and limiting it from the constraints of being a mobile operating system and putting it on a higher pedestal where it belongs because this is truly not a mobile operating system. It's a very, very powerful OS. Um, this is Jake signing out. Thanks a lot.